okay so uh, let's get started um we'll let other people join in if anybody drops by uh so um, hello everybody and welcome to another review club and today we are going to look into some basic cryptographic details and stratosphere will lead the way so over to you stratosphere and we have the screen shared and um yeah and uh, feel free to drop on and post your questions also in the recordings in youtube and other places and yep and um, let's start ahead over to you stratosphere okay so this week it's a lot of cryptography and as you see in this pr like we're doing a lot of different concepts like elliptical cryptography fields and groups and yeah also yeah so there's like two different things uh like i felt like when i read the book like all these uh things were mixed up and it wasn't very clear for me like they yeah. haven't really separated what is elliptic curves what is yeah. abstract algebra which is fields and groups and what is elliptic curve cryptography yeah it was kind of like a mixed one so yeah let's let's go step by step then like let's start with the yeah. very basic of fields operations and uh, then we'll move from there yeah so we'll go through that before jumping into the questions cool yep yeah so it's three different concepts here like the first is the normal elliptic curves uh, yeah, you can see it right yep yep we can see it yeah so an elliptic curve it's basically this equation y square is equal to x cube plus ax plus b a b are rational and like some other conditions and it would look something like this right yeah that's a really nice cute looking shape <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh yeah so that's elliptic curves and uh, guess when this was first discovered or like when we actually first knew about it some around 100 150 years ago uh, uh this guy called galois or i might be wrong yeah okay so galois actually did the group theory like this is elliptic curve so this equation like the uh, the earliest experience you've seen it's actually in ancient greece so that's wow. around 2000 years ago when they actually dealt with elliptic curves and they did they really knew about it. elliptic curves back then. what they were using that's crazy it. right uh so uh, there's this uh, uh, guy called uh, dif dif difantis have you heard of him uh huh okay uh, have you heard of yeah like he's like the, known as the father of algebra okay. so uh yeah so so they were like also he, like using these equations in some form or like they knew about this equation no, like yeah like he was doing some kind of research or uh, like he was trying to find what are rational points on lots of different kinds of curves okay and in one of his, his uh, like one problem which he was which he was trying to find out was like how, how do you find rational points on elliptic curves okay okay so uh, that is kind of related to uh, like how we find points on elliptic curves like a point addition right uh, if you went yeah. through the book like yeah. if you know two points how do you find the third point right but they didn't so knew about this, group theories and how to use this curve in cryptography and all those things right no 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 yeah okay no, but he knew how that is a use. that is a good thumbnail for the video bitcoin existed in greek <laughs> question mark question mark <laughs> yeah no, no. right uh, it yeah. will be it will be a good meme if we can find some like old greek literature where the elliptic curve is there and we can say like yeah we knew about bitcoin yeah. 3000 years ago <laughs> actually 2000 maybe 2000. like 1800 okay yeah. cool yeah interesting nice okay yeah so they actually knew i mean they didn't know everything but they knew if you give uh, like how to find the third point if you gave two points mm -hmm. on elliptic curve okay more history <laughs> like uh, uh, this is actually uh, written in a book called arithmetic uh, just historical facts okay. and apparently this it was stored in the uh, alexandria so there was a huge burning of the library of alexandria once okay. upon a time yeah. 
and uh, someone thought his work was important enough and saved not all of his books i think half of his books were only uh, uh, like those people managed to save it okay and, and these uh, guys are burned down yeah and they put it in the vatican library mm, cool. and there it stayed untouched for another 1000 years <laughs> till someone uh, went and translated it into latin okay and uh, then lot of uh, our mathematicians in the modern era like this Thing. like for mm-hmm. math and all came and that's how number theory and all came right so i had a question so, yeah that it, was... it's kind of crazy <laughs> Yeah it's crazy yeah i was a question like uh, is this equation or yeah. this curve so, used other places also um in applied engineering somewhere apart from cryptography can you cut off or am i cut off no we can hear you my did my mic cut off were you saying something yeah sorry uh, i was asking a question can you hear us am i audible oh, i didn't hear Okay right now i heard yeah i can hear yes. you right now okay okay cool right yeah so i was just asking a question that raj is, can you repeat your question yeah i was just asking the question is uh, is this equation or this curve used somewhere else also apart from cryptography in other places that you might know sorry i can't hear you like yeah i hello okay What, your screen is going dark i think i heard that your question was is this curve is this curve used anywhere else it was your question right yeah yeah right uh, elliptic curves yeah right yeah well, probably other than cryptography hmm yeah so that's interesting in a sense like um, they knew about something like- for those long years and only this mathematical cryptography was like around 50 60 years old or maybe 100 years old and then it finally got into a useful thing and now you're talking about it because of bitcoin so yeah just go ahead yeah. like just just start a side note yeah i guess geometry like mathematicians must use it for like all the geometrical problems and mm-hmm. maybe other fields i don't yeah. know yeah yeah Yeah. But it's kind of crazy because like some guy in Greek did it 2000 years ago he didn't have really have a very practical application until cryptography came which was very recent mm, development yeah. in yeah. the 1980s. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he never he probably never even imagined. <laughs> yeah. Like probably. I mean, <laughs> the same thing like Galo failed like this guy like galvo like created it in a jail when he was like punished due to some his political activities and stuff and he created this field conception or like this mm, like whatever this field is i don't understand it fully in that detail but it's like he created this field construction which was like unused for 150 years people didn't knew what to do with it until they found cryptography and say say ha huh, that's like nice use of like doing all those encryptions and other stuff yeah that's interesting yeah so i guess that brings us to our next thing yep which is more abstract algebra so so yeah abstract algebra is all this uh, stuff you hear of like this uh, groups fields those two terms they come under abstract algebra so uh, it doesn't actually feel like uh, it's actually Uh, more like a tool to interpret maths in this way okay so like you you don't actually need to make an elliptic curve like elliptic curves were there like it's just a geometrical thing right so this is just a tool to uh, so that we can learn it in more in depth and study its properties properly right yeah so this is just a tool which was developed and it, it's pretty useful and very easy to uh, okay communicate ideas using this so uh so so yeah. by so abstract algebra what a group is. like by abstract algebra do you mean 
those um, operations that we are doing over the group, like what does it mean to add elements of a group together? Yeah, not just groups and fees. Like there are a lot of other algebraic structures, and they talk about all like all the operations and like what you said, what okay. else stuff you can do with okay. it. Okay. Okay. Stuff so we can do, uh, with the with the elements of fields or groups or whatever we want yeah, are interested in. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, like, this is actually like uh, the, those days. Like, uh, people were working on geometry, number theory, algebra, mm -hmm. and all of different fields of mathematics. But they also found that they were using some common tools. Right. So, okay. So they extracted all those like those tools, some properties, and they generalized it and made it into abstract algebra. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. So we should look into other groups. So, uh, so like first there'll be something called an element. Like element is a set of objects. So mm -hmm. if it's uh, like, for example, it could be zero, one up to six. Like if right. it's a mod seven, uh, I'm talking about modular operations. Yeah, like we, like we can like go over the basics and like talk also on detail because we kind of expect our audience to know the basics also in order to make sense of a review. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yep. Feel free, like, uh, like don't get into too much details because that will like um, lose you on your track. So, yeah, yeah, like feel free to explain away. So uh, there will be an element when we talk about groups. There will also be an operation. Uh, operation basically means you uh, combine two elements and you get another element in this set. So it could be any operation, and we are just denoting it with plus. Right. Yeah. Some things that we are doing with the elements of the groups. Yeah. To get another element in the group. Right. And all groups should be uh, closed. Like they should follow closure property. That okay. is, if you take any two elements and perform this uh, addition operation, uh, then the result will you also get remain another element inside. in the same group. Yeah, groups. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's true here, right? Like right. six plus one, seven, and that's zero. Seven yeah. mod seven is zero. Yeah. Yeah. It's only true when we do the mod, though, right? Uh, uh, yeah, like we're talking about. Yeah, like in general, yeah, we, were, um, that's like the... we are de defining addition as. Yeah. Yeah, it, it again depends on what your elements and what your operation is. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if we were talking about integers and uh, our operation was uh, like uh, divided by, like, operation is just a symbol. Right. Then yeah. it would not be closed because two by three, it doesn't belong to Z. Okay. Integers. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. That's why it's not a group. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So, uh, basically, you can define any element, any operation, but it's a group if it's closed. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, it should have an uh, identity element. Uh, that is, uh, if you combine that element with this identity element, there should be no effect. You should get the same element again. So in this case, the identity element will be zero. Because if you combine right. six with zero under this operation, you would still get six. Right. Yeah. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. And uh, there should also be an inverse kind of thing. Like for every element, you also need like an opposite. Right. So inverse is also a requirement of it being a group. Yeah. Okay. So for example, uh, like if we were finding the inverse of three, so it's like three and this operation with the inverse should give you this identity element zero. Okay. okay. So, uh, and what could this be? Like four, three plus four is seven, seven mod seven is zero. Let's so inverse that. of three is four. Yeah, Emil, go ahead. No, no, yeah. It was... Yeah, four, yes. Oh, okay, okay, thanks. Uh, and then uh, uh, it should be associated to, like, this is very underappreciated, but it's very important. Like, order doesn't matter. 
Mm, yeah, okay. It would be so horrible if we were dealing with groups and the order mattered. Ah. Uh. Yeah it will it will yeah. like i can imagine why it's horrible like but i want to hear the horror story like what to, what what would happen how would the world look like if that's the case like we always have to ensure in every operation that we maintain the order yeah like we couldn't write yeah we uh, like uh, uh, like we learned later on that elliptic curves points are groups so imagine we had to write p plus q plus r every time mhm instead and if this is different from p plus q plus r like when we write the math it would look so complicated yeah because it's associative right now we can just write p plus q plus r right right okay so that's why like those properties are always listed as a thing to understand on 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 this on these theories right i was and yeah. and they go to a long in the many books they go to a long extent of proving them also like and mm. yeah i was always like wondering like where is this useful but yeah makes sense like yeah. without them the math would like really look very very weird and complex yeah it's just a tool to interpret and communicate math effectively right pretty cool stuff Yeah, and I I actually just read the book before, and they've listed groups as commutative in programming. That guy, right? that's not actually true. Okay, so groups doesn't need to be commutative. Yeah, groups don't need to be commutative. But if a group is commutative, uh, you call it a commutative group. Okay, but it's not a necessary condition. Hmm. But, but in our case, yeah, it is commutative. Lucky like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a group. Cool. Yep. So, so it's just elements in one single operation, and all this it's associative and all this closure identity inverse. Right, and then it can also have multiple operations, also, right? Or it does it has to be okay. one single operation only for a group. Yeah, a group is only yeah for a group it's only one single operation. Okay. 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 Cool. Okay, but then uh, if you come to a field, uh, yeah, I'll write it on the side, I guess. No, I just write it down. Yeah. So uh, if you come to a field. Uh, again, you have an element. So that is the set of objects. So mod. So before, if our uh, like we are talking about mod seven operations, our elements are again zero to six. Mm-hmm. In a field, you have two operations. You you can denote it using anything. So plus and star is what most people use, but we can use anything. Okay, those are just symbols. Yeah, those are just symbols. So any two operations. Okay. So when you define a field, uh, like you, you need two operations, two different operations. Okay, cool. So that's the operations first difference are, between groups and fields. Yeah, operations are just ways to combine elements and get another element. Right. Nothing. Yeah. Then, uh, then the other thing is, uh, like, uh, under this plus operation, it, the field should be a commutative group. Does okay. that make sense? Um, so, like, it, yeah, my basic math with makes sense, but I was thinking like by a group under addition. By addition, do you mean like whatever is the first operation defined for that field, or like? Yeah. So a field is actually like uh, you can think uh, think of it as it's like two groups. Like it has to be commuted. It has to be a group under this, and it also has to be a group under this. Okay. Uh, I, and the group means it should obey all these laws. All these rules, okay. Closure, identity, inverse, associative. Okay. So a field is uh, like two properties. It's it's commutative group under this addition and also under this star, whatever okay. the second operation is. Okay. 
uh, and yeah, also additionally, it should be distributed. But what do you mean by distrib? Oh, distributive. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that A star B plus C. Wait, A plus B star C. Wait, what? I forgot. Uh, I think A. Star I think both of C. You know. Equals to A star B and plus A star C. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ah. that thing. Right. And what was commutative? Just for the sake of like completing, how does yeah, that? Yeah, commutative work? means uh, A A plus B should be same as B plus A. Ah, uh, okay. And A star B should be same same as B star A. Okay. So, uh, because this is a, a group under plus, uh, and we know a group has uh, what identity element, and it also has an inverse element. So, mm -hmm. what is the inverse of our normal plus? Minus. Minus. Uh, and if it's a commutative group under star, it also has an inverse. And for normal multiplication, you say the inverse is division. Right. Uh, so that's say uh, if you look in some places, you'll see that uh, they say like uh, a field means you can you can loosely say a field is when uh, addition it's inverse, subtraction and it's sorry addition it's inverse which is subtraction and mm -hmm. multiplication and it's inverse which is division is defined. So all those four operations are defined in fields. Okay. Okay. But like. Uh... Subtraction and division need not be groups, right? Sub, uh, because sub closure, like in division, closure might not be there and all. Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah, so it again depends upon the, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, so yeah, I guess my elements and elements are pretty, like, yeah, you're right. It depends again on the elements and the operation for uh, zero to six this particular element and our normal addition multiplication like this won't work right yeah but like depending on how you're defining the field and its elements um when they work then we we want it to work right and yeah. without them we can't do the rest of the maths so yeah yeah okay makes sense Wait, it, it should work, right? <laughs> like for mod P, I think it should work. I'm sorry. Yeah, like we, if we define like 0 to 6 mod 7, yeah. then we have a multiplication over there that is inside the group and all those other properties also. So we can define division as an inverse and then doing that little format theorem magic we can turn that into multiplication yeah. and then it's also inside the group but then again like it's only you know, only for zero to six mod seven type of things not for anything oh okay, okay. Yeah. yes yes so for our modular arithmetic Like all mod group, sorry, all mod stuff, it will be fields, right? Right, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's abstract algebra. What are groups? What are fields? Uh, then we go to modern day elliptic curve yeah. cryptography. <laughs> we are out so, of the peak era now. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> No, like Galois era was also, I mean, not that old, just thousand years ago. Who, Galois? Uh, yeah, the field theory, group theory. Uh, I think like not that old. He was like contemporary around 1800 or something like that. I don't remember, but that's how it Wikipedia said. So somewhere around French Revolution, that's where he got into trouble and stuff. Ah, makes sense. So back to modern era, like, uh, so we have public key cryptography. Yay. And that started, yeah, 1970s or 1980, right. I don't know. 1975, I think, that paper, Whitefield, Diffie-Hellman. 
Ah. Yeah, so it's the Diffie Hellman key exchange thing which came. Yeah. Which revolutionized it. Uh, and uh, yeah, before, uh, like, there are two approaches to public key cryptography. One is the RSA stuff, and the other is the elliptic curve cryptography. Okay. Uh, so these are two different approaches to public key cryptography. Uh, and uh, like, uh, this elliptical cryptography is pretty new, I think. I think it was, uh, it started being commonly used around only in the 2000s. Okay. RSA, uh, yeah, RSA is based on this uh, difficulty of factorizing primes. Like, uh, if you, if I give you two prime numbers, you can easily multiply them and find what the large, like what their product is. Right. But uh, it will be very difficult to go backwards. Like mm -hmm. if I give you that huge prime, you will not be able to easily tell me uh, what are its factors. Right. Yeah. So that's the difficulty that is used for RSA type of constructions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, elliptic curve cryptography, yeah, it uses a... a are elliptic curves over finite fields. And uh, they say that the uh, security with, uh, like you, uh, if you have an RSA private key, uh, you'd need 3072 bit, and you get that same level of security with the 256 bit uh, private key in, el in elliptic curve cryptography. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so it's pretty good for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have been being lucky all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. think PGP uh, uses RSA. Yeah, Emil. I, I think no, I think elliptic curve is like one way, right? Whereas RSA, you can decrypt it back or something. No, I guess uh, not. Okay. RSA, you can decrypt it back. Uh, no, I think because it, RSA is usually used for like exchange of information. Whereas elliptic curve is like for proving, like for signatures and stuff, no? I think or you can do same? both, like it's same. Okay. Like, yeah, they, like okay, encryption okay. is a bit different than verification, signature verification and all those things. But we can do encryption with both RSA private keys and ECC private keys also. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I need to read further, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. So it's also kind of fascinating. Like here, like whether it's RSA or whether it's elliptic curve cryptography, like we say it should be easy to go in the forward direction, but it should be extremely difficult to come back in the backward direction, whether mm -hmm. it's to factorize primes or cracking the discrete log right. problem. Right. So this is like the only field where the if it's like the algorithm is so slow, it's an advantage. Normally, we always want the fastest. Algorithm. Yeah. So they are designed in a way that going so doing certain operation is like computationally almost impossible. So you don't even want to try. And yeah. that basically gives the verification property. So just to be clear, like we are not talking about encryption, decryption, going backward, forward. Like that's always possible. And uh, with the correct information, we are talking about the mathematical difficulty that is involved in doing certain operation in this kind of things called elliptic curves or field field or fields. And this difficulty is used to create a property like hashing almost, right? That you have a data. And from that data, you can get into another data. and But giving the output, you cannot determine what was the input of that function. But given an input and output, you can very quickly verify that, yeah, that's the correct input for the correct output. And this type of difficulty became the, became the prime thing. So both hashing, hashing also has this property. And inside this verification mechanism of public key cryptography that is used as the security of the whole construction. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so. Yep, so, so yeah, let's move ahead over there from we are at public key cryptography. So, yep, finally to the peer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. 
Yeah, so in Bitcoin, we use this uh, SecP curve. Right. And uh, if you look at this, uh, like there they've told, like you're defining this over a finite field P mm -hmm. and uh, they've defined the... P uh, is like uh, a quite a huge number. Yeah. Right. And this is a prime number. And this is what we're doing modular arithmetic over. Right. So what it means is that the curve is consisting of points and the points are referred to as numbers like elements and these elements are a part of a field element whose order p is defined by that huge number is that correct uh, the x coordinate and the y coordinates separately are are field elements yeah and okay so the curve comes with a, its own field element definition also but otherwise it's just a geometric curve with like making that equation y square equals to x cube plus seven yeah huh like uh, given the general equation i i was like quite surprised when i saw it first it's like how come accp is so simple like i was expecting like they will like come up with some big coefficients of a and b in the curve equation but it's just mm -hmm. zero and seven and that's it yeah when you said uh, sec p uh, like this naming like sec stands for this standard for efficient cryptography oh okay cool and this is 256 k1 256 probably denotes the 256 bit size of the points yeah mm -hmm. uh, and this k is some uh, special kind of curve yeah this curve koblitz curve okay so there has to be k2 uh, k3 also right uh, i'm not sure like uh, there is mm -hmm. uh, r1 it, like it probably should be there hmm. yeah know. Okay, lots of curves are there. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And then we have the generator point, where this this is like the starting point with which we derive all like we multiply one point with another or add point after with one on, on one another and get to new points. And this was curious also like um like there is a like a generator point used as a association is like not just any random points yeah and using this generator point you will be uh, if you keep adding you'll be able to generate all the points on this elliptic curve right so Over like energy. in a sense like if we like yeah if we change the g then even like yeah. a one bit whole bitcoin breaks basically yeah <laughs> yeah like no. I'm, i mean yeah bitcoin won't break your node will break <laughs> right yeah you, you can't break bitcoin <laughs> yeah true true yeah uh but yeah that's interesting like yeah that's like the node will not be able to like sync up anything nothing will be valid no address no public keys no transaction if you just change the g yeah mm -hmm. okay let's move ahead Yeah, this is same thing. Elliptic curves are groups. Yeah, so we call it key. Yeah, private keys and the field element, except zero and the order right. of the curve. Right. Yeah, that is capital P itself because P mod P. Uh, like I'm calling this thing P. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is zero, and you wouldn't want a zero private key right okay so a private key is another oh that's another point that you are making so i i missed the point it's like we should not have the private key as p yeah we shouldn't have the private key as zero we shouldn't have it as p either ah uh, okay uh we uh, should other mm -hmm. yeah any other uh, point any other field element in between is all right 
Ah, okay. So this is like this is must be guaranteed in the like library of ACCP two fifty six Q one stuff. Yeah, right. it, it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a doubt. Like, what is the yeah. difference between P and I guess the order H or something? I forgot. Can you yeah. open that? N N. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good question. Uh, so this is this P is the what's the, our finite field is defined over. So that means when we talk about the x coordinate, when we talk about the y coordinate, we are always saying uh, we are always doing this operation mod of this P. Okay. Uh, when we talk about this order of this curve, that's the uh, total number of points on this elliptic curve. Oh, yeah. Like another way of defining it, that would be like um, not exactly total number of points, but is like number of operations or like field operation you do on an element to get the same element back. Like you start with a, then you do a plus a, then you do a plus a, and if you do it n times, then you get back a again. Yeah, uh, and that's like because num in, in in like theoretically the number of total points on a, any curve is infinite, right? So finite. Oh, so it need not be p minus one. So like for normal, uh, this number stuff which you were doing will be p minus one, right? No. Uh, fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, XG, okay. Uh, yeah. I, I I got confused. Okay. Um, uh, Emil, go ahead. What you were saying? No, no. I think I got. I also got confused. <laughs> I'm understanding now. Yeah. Okay. So n times g equals to zero. G is the generator point. What is zero in elliptic curve? The infinity point. The infinity point. Okay. Hey. Wait, wait, now I'm confused. <laughs> I think we are all confused at this. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Huh. I'm not sure. Uh, like. Oh, yeah, it has to be infinity point. Like you. You, you keep adding generator point and you get all different G, 2G, 3G, up to NG. Oh, we can actually verify this in Python. Ah, yes, yes, I remember. There's a thing in the book, it's there. And then you get the answer as infinity. Right. But then to multiply, I guess you'll have to leave it, leave it running. Ah. Yeah, you just have to search point infinity. I remember the code. So you actually read this book. Yes, yes. Point uh, parenthesis. Infinity. Yeah. I think a bit of beyond, be, be just bit of above that. Like the first one, just be bit above that. Just scroll up. They are defining somewhere. Like yeah, just scroll up. There is just one paragraph. Yeah, here. So they are defining point of infinity as something that is added to a point to give back that point. Oh, yeah. But that's not. So, also oh, for multiplication, we are discussing multiplication now, right? Yeah. We have to get. Yeah, yeah, that's right. NG is point. Yeah. Right, ng is like then give comes like point at infinity. Okay. So like the n is defined by the number that is when multiplied with the generator gives the identity element of the group. Number of points on the curve plus one for infinity. It's also number of points at the same time, I guess. Yeah. So both are correct. Mm, yeah. Okay. 
happens in maths. <laughs> yeah. Okay, coming back. Our questions. Okay. Let's try to answer yeah, the question. Um yeah for the first one I I I'm totally in love with the code the code looks really nice and pretty but I don't know how to review it but total concept is it should exist Yeah okay I think Stratosphere gave the most comments right Yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like I was looking at her comments and trying to understand like some review approach but then like nah, like that's that's the only she can do all those math stuff even sipa was confused at some point or like <laughs> yes yes i do not understand he said <laughs> i i think i was thought a lot of stuff yeah, that was yeah, really yeah. nice that was really nice all yeah. uh, that whole review thread is like a really nice thread to read through also like a lot of people made some tests and made a made, made suggestions and comments but yeah so far like only three people in the world capable of like review it technically i'm pretty sure there are more i mean i actually think you can too uh i don't think so i don't think yeah. so and yeah like and in the review th- the three people are you sipa and real and random basically no the stack to like uh, he's yeah. very concerned about yeah our last question mhm okay Yeah so yeah I did review it I really like the code mhm it's very pretty yeah it it is very pretty and i like the way like it's very documented so you can like almost like read it as a textbook also like to understand what's going on and if like the python is like not that complicated even like mm. um somebody starting off can also use this as a library to play with yeah totally Yeah, cool stuff. We'll move on to our second question. So, This yeah, is... writing a text. I didn't try it, but yeah, curious to know if anybody did. Um, but this will be ha ah, like hmm this this probably is a good addition for the PR also, like writing the test for this thing. Uh, not really like uh, uh because you already do these things in other functions like if that it, it didn't work then all the functions would have like all the other f- tests would have failed basically yeah and yeah. like even if you do the addition like what do you compare it against uh, so for yeah. example if you do field elements of 4 plus field element of 7 it's just modular arithmetic so you know it's 11 right yeah but Yeah, if it's big numbers, how do you uh, assert it against? Mm-hmm. Or like the, there are no test vectors to assert it against. Mm-hmm. It's just modular arithmetic anyway. So right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just wrote this question to like so that people uh, use the code. Yeah. Like they get their hands dirty. We can do a quick one. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I'm just going to copy paste. like uh you can write unit tests uh it's unit test so that means uh, you have to import that module to somewhere ah Yeah, it's just addition, like uh, right. if nine or B is ten. Uh, you can uh, do C is A plus B. Mhm. Wait, so what is the modulus here? You need to give. Ah, uh, I think it's hard coded inside that class. Yeah. C oh. called size, and it uses oh, yes, the yes, HCP okay. P number. Yeah, this is the P. Yeah. So we we can we can only work with this model modulo only. So in that case, like our modulo will not even hit. I think. So it will be under. 
Yes. Right. Me, nine plus seven is sixteen. Ah, uh, so why it's seventeen? <laughs> right, right. Nine plus seven is sixteen. ियन in python and uh, another very useful thing you can do like especially when you're dealing with python uh, i think i've done this before like you can add trace points to go see what's happening in the function right so if you run this uh, it will stop there so next time you can step into plus by uh, clicking s okay so now it has gone into add Mm-hmm. So if you go to n, it means next line. Right. It's a debugging so you, tool, basically. Yes. Yeah, so you can like observe how stuff flow and get mm. interested. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Sometimes like it's idea. useful like when reviewing certain functional test PR. I I was like uh, stopping and checking the values, like whether it was making sense. Um, like if another cool thing, like in VS Code or some kind of IDE, if you have a terminal or or a debug console, then um, in 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 all the other functional tests, you can like pause the running nodes at some at at um at a at a line and then make like query to that node, like. self dot node one uh, do something for me and check the status of the node even get the mempool call the rpcs on the node so that's very cool and handy for reviewing stuffs yeah i've not done the mempool stuff but i i have done the like attaching one debugger to c++ and another to python and doing something yeah there. that's also another thing useful like when you want to like stop in a python module and then go drop in a c++ file to see the c++ internals but yeah, yeah that's it it requires some settings around the around the configuration of the debugger but that's something there are some links probably we will add it to the show note for the for the video there for people to check it out will be that's sometimes very useful to so uh, what you said is different i was like simply saying like debugging into python and stopping there and you have the like the uh, rec test node running inside the functional test right so yeah. you can access them via self dot node zero and actually run more commands than the code and uh, oh. check different status of the node right so how does the mempool look like how does the network connection look like um or get per this transaction and do stuffs with that mm. Makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is again. Yeah, it will be fun to do this live also. Yep. Let's do it. Yeah. So. Here also much... we have like hard code the value right. Also. Uh. Sorry. Which yeah, one? Yeah. From... No, like Stratus just said earlier, like. Uh, Uh, what do you test it against so we can only test against stuff we know right yes yes yeah. we we have to hard code the test vector in that case yeah yes yeah okay yeah, this is for match little theorem right yeah yeah you're going correct yeah n minus 1 equals to uh yeah identity whatever the identity of that thing is What? Yeah, I don't think it's one. It will be the identity, and what's identity? So is it F E one then? Uh, okay, maybe I should just print it.
in zero right yeah it's coming as zero so Well, so, is it F one? F one. Oh, it's P it's n to the power p minus one. So you have to like, ha? Huh, what's n? It is this. Oh no, n is like any number, I guess. Oh, we are using. We are using a which is zero. Ah, so we we didn't uh, we use the fee size like uh, we used n as a a right yeah. on the definition yeah. of a. So yeah, just put it as a any element six seven or something. Then we'll get it. Yeah, I made it b, so now it's ah, one. Yeah, now it's one. Okay, okay. That's Fermat's little theorem. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and and it is useful for like, like we can like talk about that part also a bit like why it's useful oh yeah do you want to talk about it um okay like it's useful for the in calculating inverse and i think it's described somewhere like if you go down and scroll down and it's like b to the power minus 1 yeah that line over there just just above b to the power minus 1 is no oh just just above yeah like the this is the derivation that are coming from go down a below go down a bit below slow yeah yeah that line in the middle yes p to the power minus 1 is b to the power p minus 2 so whenever we have to do division we can uh use this to transform the division into a multiplication operation and we have multiplication defined so now we can do division with using fermat's little theorem and to do that the requirement is p is prime and it's only true for p for, uh, for prime fields so that's another nice coincidence we have from math gods and uh, that makes bitcoin work yeah okay cool let's move it, it. Must, it must be intentional ha huh, i guess so it, like it yeah. yeah they knew about it mm, yeah they knew about it and uh, but uh, but it's isn't it curious like it only happens for prime prime numbers only and no other construction and without that property of prime numbers we will not be able to like divide in elliptic curves or any finite fields and essentially cryptography will not work in this way it it has to work with something else then hmm uh it isn't this just a trick to uh like do it fast like supposing mm. fermat's theorem did not exist yeah like it's not only about doing it fast it's like if it didn't exist how will you calculate inverse you cannot define yeah, division just... in 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 uh, in, in uh, elliptic curves right you like multiplication is like defined via addition and addition is the only operation that is defined over the curve so you can only do addition and multiplication so the trick of doing division is like turning that into a multiplication problem and that only works for fermat like, like that only works because of fermat's little theorem and fermat's little theorem only works if the p is prime yeah let's see right yeah so I mean, division would always exist because inverse happens, but uh, like we wouldn't be able to compute it, like you said. Right. Yeah. Like for elliptic curve in that particular construction, we will not be able to compute a yeah. division. Yeah. We'll probably have to use yeah, something I else in that case. That. Yeah. Yeah. 
yep interesting okay let's move ahead mm -hmm. class this thing represents infinity explicitly uh, what is the point at infinity in an elliptic curve right i think we have answered the first part of the prosecco question in one, some form the infinity point is the point which is when added with something gives back that something and also it is the point that you get when you subtract or do a negation operation and um, with the point so a minus a whatever the point you get is like defined as the point at infinity it's actually a point at infinity in the curve right yeah yeah because this is p this is minus p yeah then uh, infinity is kind of like some imaginary point where it yeah exists again yeah also it's okay. curious like geometrically is like that universe time sorry no no like is that time for rant like side topics yeah yeah sure there are all is time for rant yeah. yes yeah okay cool yeah so uh, yeah so we, like this is p plus minus p right we were talking about p plus minus p mm -hmm. and the thing which i found interesting when i learned about elliptic curves is uh like when we do point addition we say this like it, our line usually meets at like at three points like when we do p plus q we say it is minus r mm -hmm. like if this is point p this is point q and this is point r mm -hmm. uh, p plus q isn't r like it's not where the line intersects the third time right. but it's actually the reflection reflection of that thing okay yeah yeah, yeah. so have you ever thought of why it's the reflection Huh. Like why couldn't they just put it p plus q is r? Like why do they have to put it minus? Why did it have to put a reflection into it? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Why no, did they do that? I think the uh, it is because that modulus happens. That's why like it's you cannot go back, right? Uh, that makes modulus. sense because modulus like this the modulus. I mean r becomes minus r. That modulus yeah. actually destroys some information. That's why you cannot compute it backwards. Because, yeah, the module like it, uh, if you do modulus of minus two, uh, it's two. So if you get the answer two, it can be plus or minus two. Um, so basically, Emil, I think you're confusing with something else here because it, like, it, it doesn't concern about modulus, right? Because we are we are purely talking about geometry here. We have a elliptic curve. We have two points, and then the definition of adding two points is defined as the thing that intersects and a reflection and the question was or or i oh, misunderstood I like yeah what you were saying so i think i read it somewhere let me see if you can find it and then yeah yeah sure sure okay go ahead go ahead okay so yeah the question was like why yeah, it's why it's reflection i don't know like yeah that's an interesting question so why go ahead if you know the answer yeah so this is again uh, related to the uh, underappreciated property yeah groups need to be associated okay so we are talking elliptic curve points and their groups so if if it is uh, like if in, I think in the text like they proved ah they have a geometric proof of association yeah uh, where is it i think we'll scroll down scroll down Oh, somewhere yeah, yeah, here, thing. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, like, we are doing a plus b first, and then we are doing c here. Mm -hmm. And here we are doing a plus and uh, b plus c. B plus c. So okay. that in associativity, they both have to be the same. So because they're reflecting, like this is a and this is b. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are saying that a plus b, like the proper definition is, it has to be the reflection. Okay. And then we add it with c, and then we again have to reflect. So this is the point we actually get. Mm -hmm. Imagine we did not reflect. So we defined point addition saying it's where the mm -hmm. line meets the curve the third time. So mm -hmm. if we do a plus b plus c, uh, the point wouldn't be this, but a plus b would be this point. Right. Right. 
right and, uh, a plus b plus c would be like this, this and straight and b. somewhere on the top yeah somewhere here yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you do here this one here we are doing b plus c first so right. this is b this is c and this would be b plus c mm, no ha huh, right in in our in our in, yeah, in our case yeah in our case yeah, yeah. okay and if you do a plus b plus c it's another different point right like okay. it wouldn't be there okay so, so yeah so okay. that's where we reflect to maintain that property the ha huh, that's clever to figure yeah. out like you can reflect and maintain it yeah nice so much effort to make it a field <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they really yeah, want so to so. yeah yeah okay cool that's a nice side note yeah so yeah so yeah we were talking about infinity mm -hmm. the artificial points they created yeah so that uh, when you do p plus minus p the third point yeah makes sense reflection okay there's no reflection here yeah mm. on the other hand like when you do like um, p plus infinity also that also gives you p geometrically also because it's coming from vertical and you find the intersection which is p reflect it back oh no i'm wrong um oh no you find the line vertical you find the intersection which is the downside of p and then you reflect it back and then you get p yeah again. yeah makes sense. oh yeah so that's also another reason why we want this uh, infinity like to define inverses mm -hmm. because p plus uh, minus p is infinity right Or it's like also curious algebra like identity. algebraically it it's also similar to zero but it's called infinity yeah i mean if it was it is that i mean it geometrically it looks like it's at infinity yeah right? geometrically it, it looks like an infinity algebraically it has the property of zero yeah yeah that's that's interesting yeah. okay and well, so why do you need this point this yeah point. talked about it for yeah. inverses and also for that P plus yeah. minus P property. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, there are reasons in the code where we need to handle it. So uh, I mean, it's it's elliptical point. So obviously, only in the group elements we need to think about it. Mm -hmm. And there uh, is like only one place, like where it's being set and used in the addition. and yeah like it's also curious like how they are defining it like it's a it's a field inside the self of a group element and all points actually have this field for every other point is set to false and for the one point is set to true yeah yeah I mean, like uh, when infinity is true, it x and y could be anything. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be, yeah. But then, what does it mean to have an x and y for an infinity point? Uh, it's again like uh, geometrically, like uh, this p plus minus p could be anything, right? Like the x and y could be in this line, or it could be some other line. So x and y doesn't matter here. right yeah it's none right in the but in the definition case. it's none right yeah like x is none and assert that y is none then only ah. we, we set it to infinity or 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 else we don't so like in the previous version of the code i i probably saw it in a comment also somebody suggested to do it in this way in the previous version yeah. of the code it was like only none and having x and y as none denotes it as a point at infinity Oh yeah, but I don't. I didn't understood what was the point of like doing it. Sipa seemed to like agree that's a good idea, so they separately defined the infinity point. Yeah, uh, infinity point uh, should be different from like when we are returning an error or when something is not possible. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's still our 
like it still is a point on our elliptical system yeah so is it being returned somewhere like yeah it's no it's not where is it being returned the only place it's being oh i can't find seem to find where like it's being returning in left x so oh. supposing you give an invalid like an x which is not part of the curve Ah, oh, left x return a group element with specified field element as x coordinate and even what return group element with specified field element as x coordinate and an even y okay okay if y is none then return none what does it mean by return none it's error okay like a uh, square root will return none when there is no square root possible for this oh but that doesn't mean it's point it's returning point at infinity right yeah this means it's returning an error so this okay. has to be yeah so this was a case for when it should return an error okay and okay. we want to distinguish that case from infinity oh. case okay makes sense there are other cases where like we have we can have y as none because the point simply doesn't exist okay yeah okay uh, like yeah so we might be doing some addition in our tests which or some other algorithm where we are doing uh, fe7 plus fe minus 7 and it returns point at infinity mhm mm okay so okay. where exactly in that part of the code like where a point of infinity gets returned i'm trying to find that one Wait, plus return as zero. zero. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm talking about. Sorry, I mixed up groups and fields. Mm, okay like at line number 195 it's happening mm. so it is returning ge and ge is like the default construction of a group element and the default construction is defined as x equals to none and y equals to none right so uh. that will set infinity equals to true so that's where we are returning infinity and it makes sense because that's the case for a uh, point added to its own negation is infinity mm makes sense okay that answered that question cool so yeah um I think yeah we we kind of like un answered this question also at some point generator point on elliptic curve it's or we we you want to like iterate it over one more time inside the code also yeah yeah we we came yeah we came across like we interpreted it in two different ways both are turned out to be right mhm mm this is a generator point so uh so this is actually the x coordinate of it Mm -hmm. this lift x function returns group element which would give both the right x and the y coordinate right and yeah it's basic one interpretation is it's basically a point with which uh, you can generate all the possible points on the uh, elliptic curve right g 2g 3g you keep doing it uh, you and you will to... end up covering all the points that is there in the elliptic curve yeah that's cool And the other interpretation which you said was um uh, i was just like defining it in those like simple term is like it's just a point that was like there where you multiply with numbers to get other points yeah 
ஜெனரேஷன்ஸ்பிள் So mm-hmm. one one theory which is uh, I read on Stack Exchange is uh, this is G right and this is the x coordinate of G. Mm-hmm. Uh, this G has actually two fifty six sixty four characters. That's two fifty six bits. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you do G by two, uh, you will. Uh, how should we do it? Yeah, we can define it as a failed element and do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll like just print uh, g dot x. That's the x coordinate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got the x coordinate. Uh, does this give the size? No, they don't store it in. How do I get the size of this? Okay, mm-hmm. I'll just do this. Print g dot x and so we get another number which is the division of that number in wait yeah, that's weird okay now okay what shall like what i read was they have this element g oh they are not doing x division like they're doing a point g by 2 and then they i think take the x okay let's let's then say half g is uh, g by 2 Okay. Okay. I I don't know. Like, uh, well, you can just make the point that what you are trying to say. Even. Yeah. So basically, what they said was like when you do G by two, mm-hmm. we did not implement with this division. Oh, we did not need this, so we avoided the functions. Like division is not used anywhere in the code, so we haven't actually defined it. Okay. Yeah. So what happened was uh, like this G. the x coordinate of g is some 256 bit number and uh, they found that uh, when you do g dot x you get uh, like if you do half of it uh, you'd imagine you'd get another 256 bit number when you divide it by 2 right mm-hmm. but uh, actually you get a uh, i think 166 bit number okay so so that's kind of surprising because usually all of it does take 256 bits but this kind of reveals information about how uh, uh they might have selected g hmm okay uh, like in those back in those days they used to have like 160 bit hash functions okay. so they probably took some seed and they uh, did passed it through this 160 like some ha- some hash function which does this 160 kind of stuff and added a few and hmm. added it's actually three yeah they added six more bits extra in the beginning okay and uh yeah and they found they found g yeah, there from, yeah the, they found uh g by 2 and then uh so 
and and then they got G. So back in those days, there was a, okay, long story short. Long story short, back in those days, there was some one sixty with hash function. Okay. So they took some seed and they passed it through some one sixty with hash function, and they added. We do not know why, but they added some six bits extra in the front. Okay. And I think it's six bits, and uh, and this one sixty six bit turned out to be half of what is our generator, and for. Some reason they wanted the whole two fifty six bits, so they multiplied it with two and got G. Okay, cool. So yeah, yeah. nice. We don't really know why it is. So <laughs> yeah. like a lot of invest. Yeah, people wonder why, but okay. So but like these things are documented somewhere, right? Like stack exchange. Uh, no, okay, they're not, not documents. Not 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 the these questions, but like the process that there were some researchers who were doing it in some places, right? So, yeah. they, but they might not never published it, or like there are the reasons they don't want to publish it. Yeah, most of them are not there right now. So a, a lot of people wanted to know, but they couldn't find these people. Okay. So we do not know. Why it was not properly documented? Or okay, okay, cool, interesting. Hmm. Okay, we get to our last question. Um, yeah, are there any downside of rewriting the elliptic curve logic using fields or groups? Um, So Did like it seem like to me. I, no, I saw the discussion. Like we stopped using Jacobians or something, right? So the yeah. I think the time taken increases. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. There was a discussion like that. So that's a reason, like, of doing it in a class of Python, or is that a restriction of doing it in this way, or like it was just a decision that, like, yeah, we don't need Jacobies. So if I remember correctly, Jacobians means like matrix multiplication, right? Or is that different? I think it no? means a bit different here. It means a Jacobian representation of a curve point. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so, like before, there used to be this class called elliptical. Like remember, we discussed in the very beginning, like mm -hmm. fields. It's just a tool. Right. It's just model OP and then a lot of properties it pulls. You don't actually need fields and groups for mm -hmm. representing an elliptic curve. Mm -hmm. All you're supposed to do is every time you do some operation, you have to do model OP. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's what we're all doing. Right. This group theory and field theory is just a very pretty way of doing it, which is mathematically make which mathematically makes sense. Okay. So before we used to uh, have this class called elliptic curve and any time we do an operation we would do this modulo operation mm -hmm. we didn't have fields or groups or anything okay okay now we are separately and, defining fields and groups and yeah so yeah okay. we need a yeah so we need a field so like this one new algorithm which is uh, being added to uh, transmit public key securely and for that algorithm, we need this field element construct. Okay. So, yeah, so we need the, so when we are anyway including the field, it's better to uh, make the whole thing more intuitive and rewrite all the elliptic curves, cryptography hmm. being used using field theory. Hmm. So, so that's why we basically rewrote this. Yeah. And uh, the downside is it's expensive. But like, right like, now, not that much, right? Because the number came down after that addition of that lookup map. Yeah, but uh, still the taproot test, which was uh, the, uh, like the taproot test is the test which took the most time in the, yeah. the comments. Yeah, yeah. So I tried that test that... actually and it was like close for me, my case. Like the PR branch said fi around 50 seconds, master said 45 seconds. You use Ryzen? Uh, yeah, I use Ryzen. Like you mean the processor, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, on Intel it was pretty slow. Like I was getting five minutes or. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, also like with the lookup edition. Yeah, even with the lookup edition. Okay. Okay. I think the stack, uh, but uh, like even on master, it is taking that long, like around that time. But uh, this PR makes it slightly worse than master on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, like on master, it is this much. Even on Intel, it is worse. But yeah. Okay. Uh, it, Hmm. still slightly worse but it like got down from 1 minute like at least for amd is it got round from 1 minute 16 second to around 50 seconds or so in sipa also mentioned like he tested like it was coming close enough so yeah 42 and this one is 49 seconds yeah around for like 50 seconds same for me thing. also yeah yeah because this is almost same. Uh, yeah. I think on Intel you observed a slightly bigger difference, but it mm-hmm. also makes sense because uh, uh, like w- the multiplication thing, the stacks commit helped make the multiplication more efficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but then still, every time we are initializing a group element, uh, like we are still doing these power operations to make sure it's a right a valid point. So right. Yeah. These are expensive computations. So. Hmm. And we can't remove it. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So efficiency is. Yeah. Anyway, it's just the test framework, so we don't really yeah. care. Yeah. 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 But efficiency gets slightly worse. Cool. But I like it because it looks much better. Yeah, Blake. I I didn't like the Jacobian thing in the first place because it was <laughs> too hard to understand, and I gave up at some point. But yeah, uh-huh. this looks much simple and more intuitive Python code to understand the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, so we are at the end. Um, any other questions, side topics that we want to discuss? We kind of like extended our time quite few much today. Yeah, sorry. No, that's ab- absolutely fine. This is like amazing and good that we we did did through the whole thing. And uh, yep, this is this this has been fun and uh, very much productive. And I think it will like many other people later on will also find the recording very productive too. So thanks for like doing the nice blackboards and um presentation. And yep, this was great. Thanks for sticking around. Yep. Thanks, Emil, for joining in. And thank okay. you. If no Thanks, other question, guys. we'll see you off in uh, one week after that. Like we are doing bi-weekly this one. So the next one is on. Uh, let me check. Two weeks from now. So yeah. So let one will be twenty second. Twenty second of Thursday. Yep. And I'll share around the details soon and catch you guys later. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.